Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Hey there, it's going to be another podcast about science. I read an article and it's about single atom data storage. The full name of the article is Single Atom Data Storage Has Just Been Figured Out by Robbie Berman. It's from the Big Think site. I will put the link in the description as always. Or if I've forgotten, I'll someone remind me. And I basically just read an article verbatim. Sometimes I give a little bit of input here and there, and at the end, I talk about how much I love science and what this particular subject might mean. So the points on this are scientists have figured out how to store binary data in single atoms. Our technological ambitions require this kind of storage breakthrough. The new study may herald the start of a new age in computing. Ooh. So right away, I've always been excited about science in particular, computing and all the breakthroughs that'll happen and quantum computing, all that just fascinating. This type of idea theory I've seen in science fiction and reading it over the years. And I I think my best memory of it is an X-Men comic book. The beast is going into this once camouflaged area and he is examining this place and it's after a M day or some storyline where mutants lost their power and they were like supposed to be the Chinese or the Asian equivalent, but they had like a dome and highly advanced technology. And Beast mentions that the air was different. Uh, I don't know if he talks about the taste, the smell, maybe Wolverine is in the comic and he's mentioning it. And Beast goes on to explain, I think he calls it Spintronics where this information in the air and they're storing the information within the the spin. So that's the premise of this in a way, which gets my uh, imagination going. I'll start reading now. By the way, by the way, by the way, (laughs) I tend to do these after my other podcast. So for instance, if I record two, three at a time, whatever it is, I tend to save these for last and I'm really stoned and some of these words are really big. So I apologize in advance. Bear with me. I'll begin. You probably noticed that our appetite for storing data is ravenous. Just three or four years ago, we thought a terabyte of storage space was ridiculously capacious. Now, multiple terabyte storage is an everyday thing. And it's not just the data we want to stash away that we're having trouble handling. It's also the bits coursing through our processes and the power those straining processes require. We're reaching the limits of our hardware, so only a breakthrough in efficiency that packs data into a much tinier form than it currently inhabits could break through the wall we've been rapidly approaching. Consider this. The essential smallest building block of data is a binary bit, a simple two-way switch set to either zero or one. Eight bits equal a byte, and a string of bytes represents some mathematical value or other. The smallest physical thing in the universe is the atom. Uh Uh-huh, okay. uh, Could we possibly store a bit on an atom? Scientists from the Rad Board University in the Netherlands have just published research that presents how it can be done. Quotation. Computers have reached fundamental limitations to how much better they can get, creating a huge demand in materials research for alternatives. Modern computers use a lot of electricity, currently demanding more than 5% of the world's electricity. Fundamental science says we can gain a lot more in energy efficiency. We are focusing on a very basic component of modern computers. A bit of memory. We use atoms because they are the smallest. Uh, The smallest unit of matter and also enable us to further understand the fundamental science behind their behavior. 
A current question, how can we store information within a single atom and how stable can we make that piece of information? Brian Carelli, first author of the new research, end quotes. The battle against spinning. An especially vexing problem is coercing single atoms into resting in a binary zero or one state because atoms want to spin. What defines a permanent magnet is that it has a north and a south pole, which remains in the same orientation. According to co-author Alexander Kajaturians, Jesus, here we go. But when you get down to a single atom, the north and south poles of the atoms start to flip and do not know what direction they should point, as they become extremely sensitive to their surroundings. If you want a magic, a magnetic atom to hold information, it cannot flip. Orbiting a solution. The electrons in a magnetized atom orbit its nucleus. They also spin on their own axis, much like the Earth spins as it orbits around the sun. The rate at which they spin is called their spin angular momentum, and it produces the atom's magnetic charge. Electrons that share a similar spin angle momentum travel together around the nucleus in bands called orbitals. The further away they are from the nucleus, the higher the electron spin angular momentum and the greater the change each orbital produces. The speed at which each orbital group goes around the nucleus is called its orbital angular momentum. Going binary. Previous efforts to use magnetized atoms as storage have focused on the spin angular momentum, such as the Swiss team from Eco Polytechnic Federal de Luzanne, who announced in early September that over the last couple of years they'd gotten magnetized atoms of holmium to stay put, but only in extreme cold up to 45 Kelvin. That's a chilling minus 233.15 Celsius, though it counts as hot to atoms. The Radboud researchers took another tact. Instead of the spin angular momentum, which previous researchers have used, we figured out a way to make an energy difference between a few of the orbitals of the cobalt atom and now use the orbital angular momentum for our atomic memory, says Kajeturians. This has a much bigger energy barrier and might be viable to make the single atom memory stable at room temperature. When we first conducted the experiment and saw this binary switching, we weren't sure what was going on recalls Kajatorians. In a beautiful collaboration with theorists from Radboud University, Misha Katznelson and Sasha Rudanko, we were able to point out that we were observing the atom's orbital momentum and had created a new memory medium. It is still a magnet with spinning electrons, but now with an observable binary switch, its orbitals. And there's plenty of links here, and there's a, perhaps a picture or a video. Look closer. It is also worth noting that part of what allowed the Radbow team to get a clear view of what could be done was their decision to use cobalt atoms against a substrate of semiconducting black phosphorus. A scanning tunneling microscope allowed them to see individual cobalt atoms against the phosphorus background to gauge the binary behavior in their orbitals. Next step. There's no hardware yet that can take advantage of the researchers' finding. Still, it's exciting. As Kajatorians concluded, what this work means is that if we could construct a real hard drive from all these atoms, and we are still a long way from that, you could store thousands of times more information. So, I've highlighted this article because I remember the X-Men comic talking about it, and I've used it in my storytelling in my own um, superhero campaigns that I run. Mine is an amalgamation of all stuff. I do, I use a website. You can contact me if anything. But anyway, this is science fiction, nerd stuff. Might seem trivial, but I find it amazing. This is stuff that could really prove a real break when you got places like uh, uh, companies like Google, you know, they're all trying to come up with this quantum computer. Like, can they solve it? There's all these materials and 
processing of information, how they can store it better and more efficient as this article explains, but they can't get the whole thing together. It all has to be at certain temperatures or experimenting with metals and different states they could put the metal in and breakthroughs in that area have happened. And I've watched these lectures and they're awesome. Hours long. And it's just blows you away what they can do with these metals and uh, materials and they can make things float and just some crazy stuff. And keeping this in mind with this article is just adds more. It's showing that we're getting closer to this science fiction type thing. And yeah, maybe it might not happen right away. But if things can come together and like they have over this past century, the breakthroughs we've been having is extraordinary. And I think, as the article says, it's time for that. It's where at we are. I mean, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I'm sitting on my couch in a fucking Brooklyn, New York. But people who know better, this is going to be breakthroughs that people are going to remember. When that first quantum computer gets uh, put into normal production, no matter how many years that is from now, what it will be like is just going to be amazing. And if we get further sci-fi like in the X-Men, you can just see, you can store, you know, I mean, this is the far end of it because I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, but just the concept of like, you know, we could store information in the atoms in the air in this room. Obviously, it has to be circulated and sealed in a certain way, whatever. The comic doesn't go too much to explain it, but he gives a little bit of description. And the tropes that you hear in science fiction that have alluded to something like this have always just been interesting and could show that sometimes science fiction is the um, ingenuity, it's the inspiration for the things that we do see. And to, going back to Star Trek, which I've been doing a lot of, um, you know, data pads, tricorders, that whole thing. It's a crazy time, but it's also a time for wonder. And science does it for me. Nature does it for me. Um, I wish to, I think I've talked about this, but I wish we could have like a, a science type nature day. And all that means is you shut everything down. So everybody can see the sky, the stars. And that's the feeling you get, or I get, when I delve into this in my imagination, if I incorporate it into my writing and put it into my stories, the potential of what could be. I hope these things are interesting. I enjoy doing them. Even if I'm not too unique, I'm just reading someone's article and I give them credit, and I hope I do, and everyone, if anybody finds anything let me know i'm not trying to put anything off his mind there'll be links the information will be there and i hope everybody could appreciate some of the things that are happening if you're not this science nerd that i am that things might be crazy we might be in this weird place but in certain aspects we're still living in the best time ever yeah that might be a clinical way of looking at things and data and stats but it's a uh, something that I keeps me going it fuels me so I hope everybody's filled with wonder have some hope let's get through everything be well everybody till next time take care